Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and I have long been fascinated with radio. When I was a kid I had a CB radio so I could talk with my friends in other neighborhoods because phones were so expensive to get back then. And I just picked up this device the other day on a whim. This is called the RTL SDR. And what this is is a USB dongle that enables software defined radio on your computer. So basically you can turn your computer into a shortwave radio that can not only pick up FM broadcasts, but just about everything else, including ham radios, airplanes flying overhead, even satellites in orbit. And it is super inexpensive to get started with this hobby. This is kind of the uh, gateway drug, if you will, to becoming a ham radio operator. And I might get there at some point in the very near future, given how much fun I've had with this over the last couple of days. And what we're gonna do today is look at what you can pick up with one of these things just with its basic configuration without any experience with radio whatsoever. I'm pretty much a newbie when it comes to this, so I think a lot of my radio operators out there might be rolling their eyes a bit, but it's been really fun to play around with this, and I've actually picked up quite a bit with a really lousy configuration. So we're gonna hook this thing up to my computer upstairs and see what we can get with it in just a second, but I do wanna let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for this with my own funds, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this technology is all about. Now the price point on the kit that I purchased was $39. In the box, you get the receiver here. This end plugs into a USB port on your computer. The other end here plugs into the included dipole antenna. And the kit includes two antenna lengths. There's a super long one that I am using upstairs. You can see how I have it configured there. I'm using the suction cup mount to get it all working. I have mine mounted indoors right now on my second floor next to a window. I'm picking up quite a bit from that, as you'll see in a minute, but it'll do better outdoors. And one of the things that I've been reading about this hobby is that the uh, antenna really is the determining factor as to how much you're going to get picked up by your radio receiver, especially if you live in an area like I do, which is almost rural and not very densely populated. So the antenna placement is going to be important and the type of antenna, but I was really surprised by how much I've been able to pick up with just what came in the box, which does not feel like a very high quality piece of gear, but it's been working great. There's also a shorter antenna length that you can use when you're out in the field because these receivers actually can get plugged into Android phones for in the field software defined radio. There's a lot of depth to this hobby. They even included a little uh, tripod thing here that you can wrap around poles and fences and that sort of thing to get it uh, going out in the field when you're not next to your desk. Now there's a great guide on their website for getting started. Uh, this guide is for Windows users and I'm using a Windows computer today as well. I found Windows to be the easiest thing to get started with, but it also works with Linux and Mac as well, but it's a different process that I haven't yet dived into. But if you have a Windows PC, uh, you will be up and running within about 15 minutes and that includes the antenna placement. And you'll be surprised, I think, by how easy it is to get going with this. And what's really neat is that there's all this stuff just kind of floating around in the air that you never knew about, uh, but now you can tune into it. So let me get this thing plugged into my Windows PC upstairs, and we'll see what we can pick up here at my house. All right, so we are up and running now. The software they suggest you use on the Windows side is a free piece of software called SDR Pound. And this software is your radio, essentially, that connects up with the signals coming out of the USB dongle. There are, though, a number of other software-defined radio packages out there. Some are commercial and cost money. Others are open source. This one, I think, is closed source but is free, and I found to be, so far, the easiest one to work with. Now, what you've got going on here is a readout of what it is picking up over the air, and we're tuned in right now to my local NPR affiliate. I'll put the NCT audio on here. For and then what I can do is just move this updates. thing over here and tune into other stations, very similar to how you might tune a radio dial. Let me get this off of here because there's music playing there. Uh, but each of these little hops here on the spectrum meter are different radio stations that are broadcasting uh, in the FM broadcast space here in the US. And this, of course, is coming in off the antenna upstairs. Down here, you have something called the waterfall, which gives you the ability to see uh, what that broadcast has been doing over a short period of time. But it's often a good way to try to figure out what you need to do to tune into that station. 
when you have music or people speaking, you'll see a lot of random bumps up and down here as the uh, voice changes the nature of the signal. Um, but when you find digital broadcasts, those uh, jumps in the frequency, both on the spectrum meter here, but also in the waterfall, tend to be a little more uniform. And that's something that I'm still trying to figure out how to get uh, into digital decoding. But the FM stuff is really easy to pick up on here because if you can get over the air broadcasts in your home, you will most definitely uh, be able to tune into some of these stations. Uh, you'll also notice up here, right over here, that it's picking up some digital information from the station. Uh, in this case, the station's uh, uh, broadcast uh, ID and also what they're currently playing on the radio. So if you have a car that has uh, one of the newer FM radios, it'll tell you what song is playing. Well, this will also pick up that information for you. Let me show you a few other things that I've picked up with this. Now to get started, a great website to check out is radioreference.com. They have a bunch of frequencies that are in a database by location. So you can find frequencies that are used by different agencies and organizations that are close to where you are. And what I did is I programmed all of those in uh, to my frequency manager here on the SDR Sharp software so I can very quickly switch between stations. Uh, so right now I've got it tuned into my local airport. And what's nice is that because the airport is on the airband voice area, I can very quickly browse around and see what else is being transmitted from airplanes flying overhead. And you saw there, I mi just missed it, but there was a little spike of uh, some traffic going on a different frequency that I could tune into if I can catch it again. And so sometimes I just like to leave it here to see what uh, might be flying overhead and pick up some of the pilot communications. Another thing that I've got here, let me just turn the volume down a little bit, is that I can pick up my local NOAA weather station. So we can listen in to the weather forecast for this area. Thursday at 155 a.m. Friday. And so you've got that ability to just very quickly jump around to different things. I also have my local fire department on here so I can hear if anything is happening locally. And I programmed in a few of the other fire departments also. So you can kind of use this as like an old radio scanner would work. And you actually can get plugins for SDR Sharp that will monitor a set of frequencies and tune into those when it detects some traffic on one of them. Now, one of the fun things I've been doing with this is just browsing the radio spectrum. So they have some labels that kind of give you an idea as to what different parts of the spectrum are allocated for. So in this case, I am looking at the two meter ham band. And at night, I was able to pick up some local radio club having one of their monthly meetings through one of their repeaters, which was kind of fun to tune into and listen to. And what I do is I just kind of scroll through here, and if I see something bouncing, uh, what I can do is grab the little zoom handle here and zoom in on it to see if it's something worth tuning into. And then you can expand the bandwidth of the particular area you're looking for uh, just by dragging this left and right. You also need to adjust the modulation depending on what the person is using to broadcast. So sometimes it's AM on some of the other ham bands. It might be the lower side band or the upper side band. You just have to kind of play around with things a little bit until you get something intelligible out of it. And certain types of radio bands will have more of a particular modulation. And part of the fun of this is just trying to figure out exactly how it all works, especially because I'm coming into this hobby kind of blind here. But it's been fun over the last week uh, just to be able to kind of play with it and pick things up. You don't need a license to do this either because this is receive only. I'm not transmitting at all. So there's really nothing you can do to break anything or get in trouble because you're just tuning in to what is in the air around you. Now, another thing I've been playing around with is picking up aircraft transponders. And every plane in the air has a transponder that blurts out its altitude, its heading, and some other key data. Now over here, I've got flight aware running, which is what you use to track flights on the internet. But over here, I've got a free piece of software called RTL 1090. And I'll zoom in a little bit closer so you can see what it's doing. And what it is showing me right now are all of the transponders that it is currently picking up over the air. And if we look here on flight aware, this is Southwest Airlines 659. It's going to Boston. Uh, flight aware has it at 23,000 feet. And so does my transponder here. So you can see the altitude. Uh, you can also see the vertical speed indicator. This means that it is currently uh, reducing in altitude, likely because it's going into its approach to Boston. 
And this data is really important if you're in the air to know where other airplanes are in relation to you, not only their position, but also their altitude. And all of this data right now is streaming in just from these airplanes that are flying overhead. And in many cases, you'll have a lot more up-to-date information than what FlightAware might have, because FlightAware will only update when one of their transponders picks up the plane as it goes by. And I was surprised by how easy this was to set up and the fact that I didn't need a special antenna to do it. I'm just using that long dipole antenna upstairs to pick up all of this data. Now, if you don't want to mess around with hardware and antennas and all that kind of stuff, you can just head over to websdr.org and start playing around with software-defined radios with just a web browser. Uh, what I've got mine tuned into right now is this one located in the Netherlands. There's about uh, 997 people also listening to this one at the same time. And what's cool about this is that you can do everything we just did with the Windows software, but do it over the web with an antenna that's better than mine uh, that's located in Europe in this instance. And of course, there are others that you can tune into all over the world here, and you can find uh, just about anything, really. It's pretty cool. And what I've got mine tuned to right now is something called the Russian buzzer. Let me put the audio on for you real quick. And this is a, here, there it goes. Uh, this is a Russian military installation that's been broadcasting this buzz for decades. Nobody knows why it does that. There's some speculation that it's used for intelligence gathering or something like that. Um, but what's interesting is that this is one of these landmarks in the frequency range, at least out of this web SDR that you can use to hear something. And a lot of times you'll hear people trying to drown out the buzz or put in something else to kind of jam the signal. So it's, it's often an interesting one to tune into. Uh, they also have a chat box down here so you can click on uh, what other people are finding. So for example, you can click here. It looks like somebody picked up some military uh, communication. It looks like it's not happening right now. But you have a lot of the same controls that you had before where you can adjust the uh, bandwidth of what you're listening to. You can browse through the waterfall here and see if you can find something of interest to tune into. You can even record stuff. And this is all over the web. You don't need to install uh, the USB dongle or buy anything even. You can just use the equipment that you have uh, with a web browser and be able to tune into radio all over the world. So really cool stuff if you just want to dip your toes in a little bit without having to buy any hardware. So I've been having a lot of fun with software-defined radio, primarily because it's so inexpensive and you have so much that you can explore. And I am barely even getting started here. So I'm looking forward to learning more about how this all works, finding new things to tune into, getting into some of that digital decoding stuff as well. And it's something that I'll probably be coming back to as I learn more about how this works and maybe go a little further uh, into radio as a new hobby. That is going to do it for this look at Software Defined Radio. We'll be back with more, I'm sure, in the near future. And until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Jim Tannis and Tom Albrecht, Hot Sauce and Video Games and Eric's Variety Channel, Brian Parker and Frank Goldman, Amda Brown and Matt Zagaya, and Chris Allegretta. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. Don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.